Now let us talk about big omega notation. Now big omega notation is represented by omega like this. And big omega notation is also corresponding to the best case of an algorithm. Big O was corresponding to the worst case and big omega is corresponding to the best case time complexity of an algorithm. So in big omega, the idea is very simple. If let's consider, consider this graph like we have done for big O, the x-axis denotes the input, y-axis denotes the running time. And let's say that for any given algorithm, fn is the running time of that algorithm. Now, if we can lower bound this function fn by some, by some other function of n, then we can say that fn is omega of uh, gn. Let's say there's one more function, there's one more function like this, this function, that, let this function be the constant multiple c times gn, where gn is also the function of n. That means now we are lower bounding this function fn by another function called as c into gn. So this curve comes below the function fn. The curve c into gn comes below the function fn only after this point. So this point is our threshold point. This is called as n naught. So for all values of n greater than or equals to n naught, always our fn curve is lower bounded by the curve c into gn. If we can show this, then you can say that fn is big O of, not big O, fn is omega of gn. So let's write the definition of uh, definition of omega notation so it's simple if you can show that fn is greater than equals to c times gn that means this function fn is lower bounded by the function c into gn so here we are talking about something called as lower bound in in uh, big o you talk about upper bound in omega you talk about lower bound so, in this case, function fn is greater than or equal to c into gn, where c is a constant, c is a constant value, and this should, this should be true for all values of n that is greater than or equal to n naught. This is only true for this side, for values more than n naught. For this case, it does not matter to us. If the value of n is very less, it does not matter to us. We are always trying to find out the how does the algorithm behave for a very large value of n. So that value is should be at least at least n naught or more than equals to n naught. Now, if you can show this that f n is greater than equals to c into g n for some constant c and for all values of n greater than equals to n naught, then you can claim that f n is omega of g n. So this is the definition of this is the definition of my uh, big omega notation. Now let's try to see, uh, let's try to solve some examples on big omega notation so that we are clear on how it works. Now let us prove this, that is 10n squared plus 3n plus 3 is equals to or is belongs to omega of n squared. If you want to prove this, first we have to recall the definition of omega which is given here. Now if you want to prove this, this one, the left hand side is nothing but this is my fn. And the right hand side, this value is nothing my, but my gn. Now by the definition, I have to show that fn should be greater than or equal to c into gn. Now I can write, from this I can write, 10n square plus 3n plus 3 should always be greater than n squared. Is this true? If you look at the left hand side, the left hand side is 10 times n squared. And the right hand side is just n squared. So obviously 10 times n squared is more than n squared. Moreover, in the left hand side you are adding 3n plus 3 also. So this, this inequality should always be true. So is it true for the value n equals to n naught? So in this case, first of all, I have to demonstrate that this 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 is you know represented in the form of fn is greater than equal to c into gn. So in this case, the value of c is nothing but 1. Here, I can say that 
c is equals to 1. You can also choose 10 n squared, you can also choose 9 n squared, it's up to you. So in that case, you'll get a different value of c. That's all right. Now let's continue. Here the value of c is 1. Now I need to find out the value of n naught because my definition demands me to find out the value of n naught. So what's the value of n naught here? So is this true for all values of n? Let's let's see. So if the value of n naught or n is 0, if it's 0, my LHS becomes what? It becomes this is 0 times something is 0, 0, this is 3. LHS is 3 and my RHS is 0. Now this is true, right? So this is true for n, this is true for all values of n greater than or equals to 0. So for 0 it's true, if you put 1 it's also true. So for all the values more than or equals to 0 it's true. But remember one thing, n0 can never be, n0 can never be 0. Because n0 is your input, input size, n is an input size. So input cannot be 0, it should at least be 1. So in this case, instead of writing n greater than x to 0, it's always good to write n greater than 0 because n, the, the, the value of n will never be 0. It should be at least 1. So, uh, so it's always good to write, it's always true for n greater than 0. So we have now shown the definition, we have already shown this, we have, we have shown the value of c, we have shown this one also. So if all of this is being shown here, then I can say that 10 n squared plus 3 n plus 3 is equals to omega of n squared for c being 1 and n, n being greater than 0. So this is proved by the definition of definition of big omega. This is how you prove this. Now let's see, you can also prove this. You can also prove that, you can even do this. Now this is already proved. You can also prove that. That means if we make a curve for this, it looks something like this. So let's try to make a curve for this particular uh, notation. So let's make a curve here, something like this. So this is my input. This is my running time, running time. All right, let's say uh, the function fn, that is 10 n squared plus 3 n plus 3 is represented something like this. So let's say this is 10 n squared plus 3 n plus 3. This is fn. Now I need to show that I've already shown that this is uh, lower bounded by this is lower bounded by the function n squared. This is 1 into n squared. Okay. Now <clears throat> I can also show that this is already proved and this is the plot we have made. This is the value of n naught. Okay. So let me use a different marker. Now I can also show that 10 n squared plus 3 n plus 3 is also omega of 1, a constant value. That is, I can show that 10 n squared plus 3 n plus 3 by the definition is greater than or equals to 1. In this case, the function, this is my function g n and my c is also 1 here. 1 into 1 is 1. Okay. So c is also 1. This is c. And this is my fn. So by the definition for value of c equals to 1 and n greater than 0, this is always true, right? Because 10 n squared plus 3 n plus 3 is always greater than 1. So this is always true for all values of n greater than or equals to 0. But we write it this way because this is how it is demanded by the definition. So I can also show that, that is by the definition, I can say that 10 n squared plus 3 n plus 3 is also omega of 1. That means, I can also lower bound this particular curve by the constant curve. That means I can also lower bound this. I can lower bound this by one more one more curve. Let's say the curve is, uh, let's say this is the curve for one. Although this is not the curve for one, but let's say this is the curve. Okay. This is not the exact curve for one. Okay. I'm just giving a demo. One is a constant. So the curve will come something like this. It will be, it will exactly be something like this. Something like this. Okay, so you can say, you can show it here that, you know, I can lower bound this by this, also by this. But here, we are looking for the tightest lower bound. Whenever we are doing omega, we are looking for the tightest lower bound. Tightest meaning the closest one. The closer to this is n squared. So it's always good to write uh, 10 n squared 
3n plus 3 is omega of n squared. It's always good to write this, but nevertheless, this is also true. Is omega of 1 is also true. Similarly, I can also claim that 10 n squared plus 3 n plus 3 is omega of n is also true. So maybe if this is n, okay, this is also true. This is also lower bounded, lower bound in this curve. So this is how omega notation works.